Welcome. In this session on linear data analysis, we'll explore one particular vector space, which is the null space of a matrix. You might have come across this in linear analysis already, where it might be called the kernel. In linear data analysis, we reserve the term kernel for some other terms, and so we'll use the word null space. Let's recall from other materials the row echelon form. And the row echelon form comes from Gaussian elimination. And in it, uh, each pivot is the um, first non-zero entry in a row. And uh, below each pivot, a matrix, the every entry of a matrix below a pivot has to be zero. And we get this, as I mentioned, from Gaussian elimination. The next one is the reduced row echelon form. And in this, it's derived from the Gaussian elimination or from the row echelon form. And in it, there are two specializations. One is that each pivot has been modified by row operations to be one. And um, above each pivot is zero. Let's take a simple example. If we have a matrix A, and if we have its first column is 3, 1, 2, its second column is 3, minus 1, 2, its third column is 9, 1, 6, and its fourth column is 6, 1, 2, then after I perform the RREF, what I find is a matrix R. And that matrix R, the first column is 1, 0, 0. The second column is 0, 1, 0. The third column is 2, 1, 1. And the fourth column is 0, 0, 1. And so in this, this is a pivot. And everything there is nothing above it. Everything below it is 0 because it's in row echelon form. This is the first non-zero entry, and below and above it is zero. This is not the first non-zero entry. Oh, sorry, that should be a zero. This, uh, below this has to be zero, and above it can be non-zero. In fact, it's important that it's non-zero. And then this is a pivot, so there's nothing below it, and everything above it is non-zero. When I work out the null space, what I find is that the null space of this matrix is this vector. It's minus 2, minus 1, 1, 0. And I have a, a, a useful algorithm for finding the null space from the RREF. And this involves a fact. So a fact is a theorem that I'm not going to prove right now. So fact is that we can always represent a the RREF and then if we permute we, if we use a permutation matrix so that's all zeros and ones and uh, has determinant one and the RRE if we take the RREF and then we permute the rows and columns I can get this into a form where I can get the identity in the upper left corner I can get some factor, which may or may not be zero, in the upper right corner. And then if there are, if the matrix has certain properties, there might be one or more rows of zeros. And then we continue that over. And so that's the general form of an RREF. And it will turn out that the null space, the null space of any matrix is we take that permutation matrix first, and then we multiply it by minus f, and then 
we have an identity matrix that is the same size as these rows. Now, how would that work in this case? Well, what would happen is we would have um, this factor would be 2, 1, 0. And then I would have to append a 1 onto it and then permute it to get it into the right form. And then I, I would see that the negative 2, negative 1, they stay in place. And then the 1 and 0 get swapped by the permutation. So this is the way that I personally find the null space of, of a matrix. Now let's consider some properties. Let's think about the null space of a matrix. So either the null space is trivial or it isn't. So if the null space of a matrix is trivial, and by trivial I mean um, only zero vector. So um, we'll say has only zero in it. Then it will turn out that the equation A times some unknown weight vector equals some constraint vector has one solution. It has a unique solution. And if the null space of a matrix has vectors in it, so let's say it's non-trivial, then what we have is a subspace. So there is a subspace and let's call that subspace double barrel W of vectors. And so these will have the form, let's say, of W. And they're in, so how many entries do they have? Well, they have as many entries as there are columns of your original matrix. So that will be N in our examples. And so a subspace W of vectors, WN, and it will be such that if we take anything in that null space and we transform it with the matrix A, what we get is the zero vector. And that's what it means for there to be a null space. In this case, what we're saying is that if I take this vector or any multiple of it, any it could be the zero, but uh, any uh, multiple of this vector, and I multiply it through A, that I'll get the zero vector. So let's just do a quick check of this we'll, um, in, in this example. So 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. 3 times one, minus 1 is minus 3. So our running sum is 9. Plus 9 times 1 is 0. Plus 6 times 0 is 0. With the second row, 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, so our running sum is minus 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. Add it to our running sum, and that's 0. And then 1 times 0 is 0. So as I pump this vector through this matrix, what I end up with is the 0 vector. And that is the meaning of this is the null space is an entire vector subspace that are mapped to the zero vector. Let's take a moment now and recall that when I have a matrix times a vector, I can write that as a linear combination. Let me try that. So I could write this as, I could write A as first column and its second column and so on until I've expressed all of the columns in A. And that means that A times W has to be, if I now take the first entry of W times A1, that's W1A1, and then I add a second plus W2 times A2, and I continue on until 
I have expressed all of the entries in the W vector and all of the columns of the A matrix, that that has to equal zero. And if the null space is not trip is non-trivial, that is, if there are vectors in it, then that means that there are non-zero weights, W, that will lead to this linear combination. So there are some important implications in this for the um, for linear combinations, and that means that the null space is also telling us something about the columns of the matrix A. Well, let's do a quick example of what this could mean. So let's recall an example that we had. And what we had was that a vector space V was all vectors U that had a particular form. And that form was they were equal to X and 2X. So we said that this has one degree of freedom, and we think that it's a one degree of freedom or a one-dimensional vector space that's in a two-dimensional bigger space, R2. And then we had a restriction form. So the restriction, it was also all U vectors that were all u vectors in that vector space, let's say, let's put in the present tense, are u dot c equals 0. And then let's say where the vector c is, and our example was 2 minus 1. And so what we said was that these were equivalent statements. And we, we reasoned it out, but we didn't actually prove it. Let's now consider this. Let us, let's write u dot c. Well, another way we can write it to take advantage of some of the previous sessions is, well, that's commutative, so that's c dot u. And another way to write that is to get rid of the dot product and put in a transpose. So that has to equal the transpose of the c vector times the u vector. Well, now, let's consider the matrix A that is it has one row, and that is C transpose. So that means that it's one row, and the first entry is 2, and the second entry is minus 1. And the RREF of A, well, that's easy to find, because all we have to do is make that leading non-zero a 1. And so that will be 1, and we get that by multiplying the entire row by 1 half. So that means the second entry is minus 1 half. And then we'll use this rule over here, and we'll construct the null matrix, the null space of A, as what I do is this is the factor. I negate the factor. Permutation won't matter here. So I negate the factor, and I get 1 half. And then I have to append a 1 to get the size to be right. And any multiple of the null space of a matrix will be 0 when we push it through the matrix. Let's take a look at that, because that could also be written as 1 times 2 multiplied by any factor x. So when we said that the vectors u were in the vector space v meant that the first entry was x and the second entry was 2 times x, that is equivalent to saying that u is in the null space of this matrix, which, which is just, just has 
one row, and that one row has two columns. The first one is the value 2, the second one is the value minus 1. And this vector space is described as the null space of this matrix. This continues on, and we could actually go over here, and what we could say is, well, does that mean, that, what does that say about this? Well, what I could do is I could form C as a transpose, and what it would say is that the null space of this matrix is a vector which, if I take the dot product with each of the columns of C, each of those dot products is zero. And that would be a way of describing this null space as, as involving this new matrix. So what this means is this is not just the null space of A. This is a one-dimensional vector space in a size 4 bigger coordinate space.